Hello, this is a pathology specimen showing a uterus that has been bisected and uh, we can see that this is actually the uterine fundus. We're looking mostly at the endometrial cavity and this is the uterine wall and over at this end we can see the uterine cervix which is partially truncated distally. At this angle, we can see uh, one side of the adnexal structures, which again are truncated. And this is the uterine serosa. The pathology is seen mainly within the uterine cavity, and uh, we can actually make it out to be uh, this masses of grape-like vesicles. Um, let me just magnify this. We can see that each one appears to be quite translucent and it's almost like a little balloon or a blister. And these are termed as grape-like vesicles. Sometimes the patients may actually pass these out per vaginally and that may be a clue to the diagnosis of this lesion. And the diagnosis here is hydatidiform mole. Hydatidiform moles form part of the spectrum of gestational trophoblastic disease. Moles are a proliferative disorder of the placenta due to abnormal fertilization. So what we're looking at is actually placental tissue. There are three types of moles. There is the partial mole, which is actually formed from material from two sperms and one egg, and therefore the total chromosomal makeup is actually triploid. And we have the complete mole, which is diploid, but in which the genetic material solely originates from the sperms. So it's either one sperm that has duplicated, or it's two different sperms fertilizing an empty ovum. We also have the invasive mole, which is a mole that grows into the myometrium and sometimes can grow all the way through the myometrium, perforating it. In the invasive mole, there can also be distant embolization because of uh, invasion of blood vessels. Clinically, the uterus is often larger than expected for that particular date of pregnancy or gestation. Measurement of serum HCG values would show also that they are much higher than expected. There may be associated hyperemesis, and um, the patients may actually experience abnormal bleeding, per vaginal bleeding, spontaneous abortion, or as mentioned earlier on, they may actually pass these grape-like vesicles. In terms of the prognosis, this is variable. There may be persistent uh, gestational trophoblastic disease. The risk is somewhat higher in a complete versus a partial mole. There may be persistence in the form of persistent molar pregnancy or an invasive mole, or even uh, in malignancy, which is choriocarcinoma. Uh, this is associated with complete mole rather than partial mole. And in addition, subsequent pregnancies may also be molar in nature. In terms of the gross appearance, we saw this example of a complete hydatidiform mole. For the partial mole, it is usually a little bit less obvious uh, in terms of there being a mixture of relatively normal looking placental tissue as well as some of these um, translucent grape-like vesicles. Also, in a partial mole, there may be a gestational sac present. Let's move on to have a look at the microscopic appearance. These pictures are obtained from PathWeb, uh, the online pathology resource, and we're looking here at uh, some material from a hydatidiform mole. Uh, what we can see, if you focus on this area, are very markedly swollen coronic villi, and also the bluish areas around the villi are evidence of trophoblastic proliferation. There's also some endometrial tissue here, so this is taken from a curatage. Looking at high magnification, we can see a swollen villus and uh, there are what we call central cisterns, which are empty spaces within the swollen coronic villi. And if we look at the periphery of the coronic villus, we can see that there is accompanying trophoblastic proliferation. So when these villi become extremely swollen, they can be seen grossly as those grape-like vesicles. Hence, in summary, we're looking here at an example of a case of a complete hydatidiform mole, and this is uh, due to abnormal fertilization, and this causes abnormal trophoblastic tissue in the form of chorionic villi, which are very swollen, 
and with accompanying trophoblastic proliferation. And a molar pregnancy may carry with it a risk of persistent gestational trophoblastic disease or recurrent molar pregnancies. Thank you.